I'm here today to talk about a poisonous substance. And this is something that's actually overwhelmingly common. This is something that's found in ETHS. It's in this room right now. Um, it's found in your house and in the houses of everyone that you know. Um, this is actually a substance that's found in your phone. So why isn't it regulated? The EPA hasn't banned it. You know, there aren't any laws against it. Well, the answer is that this substance is actually light. Um, so this is what you usually think of when you think of light pollution, and that's a familiar sight to anyone who lives in a city. Um, the sky's all lit up, no, no stars. And without light pollution, this is an imagining of what a city would look like. So, you know, from just these two photos, we, we can see light pollution's not so bad, right? It's not great to have an ugly sky, and it would be nice if it was pretty, but it doesn't really matter that much um, for our health or for you know, the environment at large. Well, actually, the answer to this question is a lot more complicated than this. Um, and to answer it, we have to go back to the very beginning of life on Earth. So when life evolved, everything that exists ad adapted and, and became um, synchronized with the rhythms of the Earth's rotation. So all of the plants and animals and even humans um, on the Earth are able to adapt to cycles of hot and cold and rainy and wet seasons and to the cycles of the night and the day. Um, and in humans, we explain the way that we adapt to the cycle of night and day um, by something called the circadian rhythm. So this is a graph of the circadian rhythm. As you can see, melatonin, which is the chemical that regulates sleep, should rise during the evening, peak in the night, and then fall sharply as soon as the morning comes. And this chemical doesn't just regulate sleep. It's also been linked to several other functions, such as how alert you are during the day, how well you can concentrate. It's been linked to your mood um, and to the very balance of hormones in your body. Um, and the problem is, as a society and as a species, we've disrupted this cycle. So just less than 150 years ago, in 1879, the light bulb was invented. And, and since then, we've had artificial light at night. And we've existed on this planet for six million years, and we've been going through this natural circadian rhythm um, for six million years. So that's less than 0.00025% of our existence that we've been affected by light at night. Um, and and what, does this hap what happens when we disrupt this cycle, and what happens when we disrupt this natural rhythm of day and night? Well, it's leading to a public health crisis. The interruption of the circadian rhythm has been linked to anxiety and depression. It's been linked to diabetes and obesity. And it's been linked to the uh, development of cancer, including prostate cancer and breast cancer. Um, and this isn't just a problem that affects humans. All animals and plants have their own circadian rhythms, and they're affected by light at night in just the same way. Um, so any health effects that it has in humans, it, it also affects animals and plants, and, and especially nocturnal animals that rely on the night in order to breed and look for food. Um, their populations fall sharply in areas that are affected by heavy light pollution. So how can we solve this problem? On an individual level, if you have problems with sleep or if you suffer from a mental health disorder, changing the way that you think about light might literally change your life. You can dim your lights at night to follow the natural cycle of the, or the Earth's light and you can avoid technology that emits blue light, which is the most harmful kind of light um, for the circadian rhythm. Or you can buy a pair of these, which are cheap goggles. They cost about $5 online. They block out almost 100% of melatonin suppressing blue light. And during the day, you can expose yourself to bright light and to sunlight especially, which will increase your alertness and keep your rhythm on track. On a broad scale, we can push for policies that help to regulate the amount of light that's emitted during the night in our cities. We can develop technology like downcast street lighting to help keep the skies clear. Um, and if we all push together to end the problem of light pollution, we will soon look back on this crisis as we now look back on the production of leaded gasoline as a devastating public health issue that we have left behind firmly in the past. Thank you. <laughs>